Basically, when you come back to, to the planet, you're basically falling back onto Earth. Um, what, what keeps you in orbit is speed. As long as you go fast enough, you will stay in orbit. But if you slow down just a little bit, just a tiny little bit, which is what we do, then you start falling back down on the planet. Uh, and of course, you want it to be a, as much as possible a controlled fall. But what's happening is that all that energy, if we, if we think about the launch of the rocket, you know, we can visually imagine, because we see it, all that energy being liberated by the rocket engine. And all that energy is transferred onto that tiny little capsule. And it's stored in its height, 400 kilometers, but especially in this enormous speed, 28,000 kilometers per hour. And so if we're falling back onto the planet and we do not want to crash violently onto it, we need to get rid of all that energy. And what we're doing is using the atmosphere to help us get rid of, the, of that energy. And so we're transferring energy to the atmosphere. And at some point, when you get low enough that the energy, that the atmosphere is quite thick, you're transferring so much energy as you slow down that the atmosphere heats up and it, it becomes so hot that you're literally a ball of fire. You look out of the window and there's like flame dancing out the outside of the window. And the window itself uh, becomes charred and becomes darker and darker and darker. And eventually you don't even see the, the flames fully anymore. You just see a little bit of an orange glow. Uh, and that's about five minutes. And that's where I thought, hey, I mean, basically, if, if, if it was night, which it wasn't, uh, it would be like a falling star. And, you know, somebody might be just wishing upon us and thinking we're indeed a star falling on the earth. <laughs> I was not afraid during the re-entry, and I guess the reason is that I knew exactly what to expect. And um, I had an expectation for it to be dynamic, and I, I embraced that experience as fun, in a way. You know, the, the whole um, accelerations, and the flames, and then the parachute opening, and the, you know, being jostled and shaken. All of that was expected, and, and I, I wanted it to be a fun experience, and that, that's what it was in the end. So we landed in, uh, in the steppe of Kazakhstan, so we, we took off from Kazakhstan, we launched from there and also we landed back in Kazakhstan, but really pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was a very special day, usually if you see pictures of Soyuz landings, uh, there's typically one of two colors, it's either brown, so the steppe is very arid, or white because it's winter and it's uh, snow covered. In our case we came back at an unusual time, it was the beginning of June and it had rained for a couple of weeks to the point that the search and rescue forces were worried that we might fall onto one of the temporary lakes that had formed. So they were all ready to actually fish us out from a lake. <laughs> um, so we did not land in a lake, uh, but what was really nice is that the steppe was all green, very, very unusual. And so we landed and there was this very strong smell of grass uh, coming, coming through as we you know, started to get um, air inside the capsule from, from outside and then it took us out and there were actually even little flowers and so I thought it would be cool to smell a flower so we were laying down in our seats we're not supposed to stand up or, or try to move on our own for, for you know at the beginning and so I asked somebody to, to bring me a, a flower and granted it was a step flower it didn't smell like a rose <laughs> um, but still you know it was uh, a smell of earth so when you come back the the brute force of gravity is overwhelming and and it's really all in your brain because you, you obviously you're not heavier than you've been all your life right um, but your brain has forgotten about weight uh, and so your perception is like you know it, all of a sudden I'm weighing 500 tons or, or something like that and and your brain does not know how to mobilize the right strength in your muscles. Your muscles are there, I mean, you're, you're strong because you work out in the space station, but, but actually being able to use your muscle strength is really a question of, of, uh, of, of, you know, of, your, of your brain doing that. And so I, I remember the first experience I had with that, you know, I was still in the Soyuz and the descent module, and uh, um, so the first person to go out, of course, is the commander because you can only go out from the center seat. And then I was the next, and so I was supposed to move from my seat on the left to the center seat to then be able to slide out. And so, you know, what, what you usually do, you would just 
push yourself up with your with your hands like that and that's what I did and then I pushed myself up and I immediately fell back down <laughs> because my brain by far hadn't attempted to use sufficient force to be able to actually move across. So I'm like, okay, I think I have to concentrate on this. It's easy, but I still have really to, to focus. And then when you have something in your hands, for example, I remember a very, very light matryoshka that they gave us as a gift uh, a couple of hours later at the airport of Karaganda. Very, very light because it, it was actually, it was supposed to be a matryoshka, but it didn't have the, the ones inside. So it was really only one layer. <laughs> and it was just resting on my hand and it just felt so heavy, like I had a thick encyclopedia book in my hand or something like that. It was very strange. <laughs>